Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be with you today, my friend. And um, just can't tell you what a privilege it is to be able to connect with you like this. And thank you uh, for the, your emails, your sweet cards, uh, your contributions. It means so, so much to us. I think you're going to be glad you tuned in today because I think believers really realize that our country is going in the wrong direction. And my guest today is very much aware of that. And so she's got her campaign going. Uh, and we call her Renee for the Republic, also the Star Spangled Chick. And uh, when you see her and you meet her, you're going to recognize enthusiasm. And I think God called and ordained to kind of wake up the Christians uh, that we have the ability to take this nation back for the Lord. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And so uh, if you don't vote, shame on you, okay? And we're going to talk about the things that are going on, and I'm glad to have her. She's very familiar with our station in Knoxville. So all you folks in that beautiful city in Tennessee, um, welcome. We love you very much. Okay, and I'm going to uh, join Stephanie for crowdsourced mashed potatoes. And there's, there's a whole message in this. We'll talk about it when I get over to see her. After I tell you about basic steps of Bible study and... I've offered this before and I am so committed for people to learn and understand the Bible and when you can get a jump start on it and have no kind of how to do it, you're going to make progress much, much quicker. This book is by Kay Arthur. She's absolutely legendary in Bible teaching and this is yours for any amount. You can write to us. Or you can call our 800 number, 1-800-229-0059. And um, also, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I've joined Stephanie here. We're going to fix mashed potatoes. Doesn't that thrill you? I want to tell you why, though. What you got? <laughs> oh, she <laughs> She'll be wearing this the 26th of December. And I want to tell you something about her. Her excitement about Christmas is genuine. It really is. It's like a child. I don't know. You're stunted I am like somewhere. like a child. I'm like eight years old. Okay. You're stunted somewhere. <laughs> no, I want to tell you about this because I yes. don't know any new sitcoms. Couldn't tell you one. But some of the old ones I watched, mm -hmm. like All in the Family. Mm -hmm. And we've all known people like that. Mm -hmm. And this one, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. Mm -hmm. I've met people exactly like every one of those characters. Mm -hmm. It might not be that. Sure. Okay, they did a show once on um, Marie, who's the most obnoxious mother-in-law in the world, um, wanted to have a healthy Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and she fixed a tofu turkey. Yes. You saw that? Yes. Okay, and it was so <laughs> awful that uh, Raymond or one of them got a real meal, and they were eating it at midnight. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're going to talk about today is changing up your Thanksgiving meal a little bit. Um, I know that my family, for my whole life, and that's a long time, our mashed potatoes have had milk and butter in them. Mm -hmm. And same with you, Same right? with me, yeah. Okay, so we're going to make a little change here, and you might just want to look at your traditions and what you have every year, and that's what your family wants, but maybe you can make it better or a little different. Yeah, I usually make the yams with the, ma with the marshmallows melted on top, uh -huh. but this year I'm making the mom's sweet potato bake that we did on the show. Yes. It was so good. I'm going to do half with marshmallows mm -hmm. on top, half with a yummy, nutty, um, oh, brown fun. sugary on top. So that'll be my one change, but other than that, we pretty much stick to yeah. the... <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're just regular entrees and so forth. Maybe you could make it a little bit different. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, okay so, so I'm just doing a little salt and pepper, right? This is about three pounds of potatoes. And I'm cutting up green onions. They're supposed to be chives. They're fake chives, okay? But they're for decoration anyway. Yeah, now, so. now one and a half sticks of butter. <laughs> and three pounds. And three, yeah. So but, yum. <laughs> but remember, Thanksgiving, anything goes. Any no calories don't count. During that the one holidays. day. Yep. Okay, half a cu cup of sour cream, which this might be the addition that a lot of people don't do, but right. it adds such a wonderful tang. I think that might. Uh, and a half a cup of milk. Okay. Isn't there some statistic about how much people sleep after Thanksgiving meal? They go sit down to watch the football game Listen. and pass right out. 
I I don't doubt it. Yeah. Like we get our bellies full, we mm -hmm. watch a little football, and we and we sleep. But you know, isn't it great with all of the faults? Okay. Of America, that we still have a Thanksgiving. Oh, day. for I think sure. That's, I praise God You know, God they're for saying, that. okay, this this might be a hot mess. These potatoes might have been a little overcooked. Well, also <laughs> though, uh, I don't like I don't like kind of dry mashed potatoes. Okay, well, you're not going to get no, dry no. mashed potatoes uh, today. <laughs> how do you explain it? You don't want it soupy, but I like it. Not runny. I, this this one might be runny. This is going to be, a, we need a bowl, not a plate. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the flavor is what, I don't know. You keep working on that. It might not be too bad. I don't know. It's television, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't shake your head at me, Sally. They're and, runny. <laughs> and we can't, yeah, they are. So I wouldn't put that much milk in it. I wouldn't put less, yeah, start with less. Mm -hmm. Start with less. Just use your fork and just take mm -hmm. a bite. You just take a bite. Oh, okay. We're not even going to be embarrassed and well, put see, that on the plate. <laughs> I like my... We can add... Listen, you add potato flakes, okay, and just thicken it up. It's fine. It'll be They're fine. They're very good. They're tasty. They just... But um, I like... I like my mashed potatoes mm. a little bit more soupy like that. That's fine with oh. me. So... We're, we're it, you know what it tastes like? Because you put sour cream, it tastes like a baked potato. Mm -hmm. Here, it tastes very those. delicious. So, and, But when you put it <laughs> in the bowl, you put the chives start on Start with less milk. <laughs> mm -hmm. Start with a little yeah. less butter. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just put threw everything in. Yeah, just and, what and they told add. us to. Do that. Yeah, yeah. That's us. Okay, if you want this recipe, uh, the information is coming up on your screen. Get it the way you like it. And uh, hope you enjoy it. And as we look at some of these recipes, uh, just way ahead of time, we'll say, hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, the best ever. Happy right? Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, stay with me. I'm going to talk to Renee for the Republic. And I think you're going to feel more patriotic when we're finished. So stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, I've been in correspondence with uh, Renee for the Republic for several months, and even her emails are just so enthusiastic about what she's doing. And uh, what she is doing is trying to put a spotlight on this wonderful nation and how it's going the wrong direction, and we need to pull it back. So welcome. <clears throat> Thank welcome. You. Thank you so much. This is Destiny because I was talking to the Lord in the living room when I was watching your show, and I've been watching it for a long time, thinking what a wonderful job you do in helping restore lives, helping uh, give the truth to this nation that is so needed. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I would really love to be on our show one day. I didn't have a ministry going at the time, mm -hmm. and I heard him say, okay, mm -hmm. so we're here today because of God's work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me know a little bit about your background. Uh, when did you meet the Lord? It's been, uh, it's been quite some time ago when uh, they used to allow uh, salvation rallies at high schools. And of course, they don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But I did come to know the Lord at one of those youth rallies at mm -hmm. our high school back in the day. But for many years, honestly, did not live it. I did not walk the walk that I was supposed to walk. Mm -hmm. So it took quite a while for uh, everything to kind of hit home with me and, and realize that um, it needed to be deep, it needed to be authentic. Yeah, and he's patient with us, isn't he? He's loving and patient. <laughs> and even when we reject him or we put him on the side burner of our lives, he's still there and he waits until we really get a heart transformation. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we turn our lives over to him and say, Send me. What is it that you want me to do with my life? Because my life is yours. And you consider what you're doing a ministry. 100%. I love your outfit. Thank <laughs> and you. And all your pins. Yes. A uh, almost a military type, you know, a, 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 a thankfulness for our military and our law enforcement as well for all that they now do. Now, you, you have some uh, major degrees and so forth, but you worked in Washington, D.C., right? I for a congressman. I did. Who was it? 
It was Congressman Jimmy Quillen. Uh, back in the day, he was chair of the House Ways and Means Committee, so he was pretty powerful. What's, was he from Arkansas? He actually is from uh, Tennessee. Tennessee, I mean, yeah, right. Tennessee. Yeah, he was from Tennessee. So if you can imagine just uh, being from a rural, small town and going to the epicenter of the world, and my eyes were just opened so big to what was going on. And one of the first things I remember was going into the Smithsonian and seeing our beloved documents under that glass glass yeah. you know it's a, it's bulletproof it's uh, the the glass is protected from the light uh, it, there's guards around and there's our constitution there's our bill of rights there's our amendments there's the declaration of independence and i remember thinking this is incredible these documents are what our country's built on and arthelene if as you well know those documents are being shredded yes. today, just like Pelosi at the State of the Union mm -hmm. when President Trump was speaking. She shredded his speech, and that is exactly what the left is doing to our sacred documents that protect our freedom, freedom of religion and freedom of speech. Well, just the idea that a government official would do something so childish. It's despicable. And, uh, I don't know. I don't have. I don't have the words for it. Well, I'll tell you something that burns my biscuits is that they declare they are all about democracy. Yes, and for the American people. How can you be about democracy if you're shredding the very documents, if you're eroding the very documents that protect our mm. uh, our country and our our freedoms? It, it makes no sense. Uh, you mentioned the there. There's an aura of uh, power in Washington D.C. I think it's one of the most exciting places. We were in the. White House the day that Jacqueline Kennedy moved out and it was still sh uh, had the bunting black bunting because of the passing of President Kennedy and this maintenance worker was coming down the stairs carrying a crib that was John John's crib oh my. and it, it becomes very real to you and when you go to all of the various um, monuments there's it's a thrill there, there's a power there and on a much smaller dimension it was a little bit more up close for me because my husband built a big church years ago and the governor of this state dedicated it it's the governor Ruben Askew a wonderful Christian gentleman I can't tell you what his office brought to that building mm -hmm. everybody was so excited and there were secret service men around one of our guys that he's got a gun he's up on the balcony <laughs> you know there, there's something so powerful yes. about it and I think that when a nation has respected God and so forth that brings even a higher dimension of the power and the appreciation for the absolute privilege of living in America. You know how fast they're coming over our border right now. Amen. Morning. Amen. Yeah. So um, you were there in Washington, D.C. how long? Uh, not very long, just long enough to know that this was the greatest country in the world. And I developed a, a true love for the country starting there. Um, and from there, I decided to go into journalism and uh, learned how important the truth is. Absolutely. You know, and we have, as a country, we have fallen away from that. Uh, and there's also a diabolical agenda to buy up all of our media outlets. And mm -hmm. a lot of them are liberal owned and some of them even have- They have most of them. Yes, they do, they, are, they already do. So when they control the messaging, so the days when I was in journalism as, a, as an award-winning journalist uh, are gone in terms of ethics, in terms of fairness and balance and, and so forth. What we see today is really nothing more than propaganda. Yeah, a few years ago, the, there were three major networks, television networks, and those who had the news, you didn't know mm -hmm. whether they were left or right. That's right. You didn't know. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that's, that's certainly the way it's supposed to be. Um, now, Renee for the Republic and the Star Spangled Chick, which I like very much, you consider this a ministry, but what's your goal? You're, you're out talking, making speeches, uh, you're going to be with Governor DeSantis this evening, right? Uh, actually, tomorrow, yes, at, at a Save tomorrow. American event. He will be the headline keynote speaker at a Patriot Dinner, 
and Kaylee McEnany will also be there speaking as well. That's part of the Heritage Action for America, and I have to give a shout out to their coordinator, James Quarles, who uh, enabled me to be able to be there. Um, we've been to the one in Atlanta a couple of years ago, but you talk about getting fired up. People from all over the country are coming to try to salvage America, to try to restore America on every level from uh, restoring election integrity, which is cr critical. It's yes. key. Yes. If we don't fix that, we're really in trouble. Uh, but all across the board, you know, our schools that have been taken over by the left, we're going to be addressing all of those topics at this conference. And Well, thank God to see people mobilized. And one thing I've enjoyed the news recently, these mothers that are just mad. Yes. And I'm not going to teach this thing to my children. Amen. When I read that, that drag queens, and I saw their pictures, were reading to very small young people in the libraries, in our public libraries, reading stories to them, and at how young they are introducing in some of our public schools. I like to be careful. There are some great public community schools that are fine. Mm -hmm. But there's others, I think the majority, we need to know what's going on. And uh, that they're teaching little kids, you know, first, second, third grade, um, gender identity and basically homosexuality mm -hmm. and putting, putting kind of in their mind uh, that you don't have to make up your mind if you're a boy or a girl till you get a little bit older. Mm -hmm. It's insanity. It is. And I think that uh, we ought to put a spotlight on it and that these mothers that are mad, I say stay mad, stay right in there, go for those school boards. Our children need to learn how to read and write and do math and and be able to balance a checkbook and a few That's things that'll get you through life. Exactly right. Now how would you describe your, your organization? You're, you're Renee for the Republic. Uh, what Are you going to run for office? I've been asked that, but I feel like the Lord has me right now because I have a background in mass marketing. So I understand about the manipulation that's going on by the left. They are masters at manipulation. They are masters at perception. They are masters at twisting the truth and taking things out of context. And their, their mass marketing campaigns are just uh, really uh, doing a lot of uh, damage. So I have that in my background. I have the journalism writing. So you know, how can how can we change that? Change that that conglomerate that seems to own the major part of our media. If we have some wealthy Christians who will step up to the plate and buy these uh, media outlets back, that would help. But in the <laughs> meantime, you know. Yeah, if you can do that, <laughs> write to me. <laughs> but, the, but in the meantime, uh, the Lord, uh, you know, He doesn't need um, a vast army. He needs a few committed people. So your viewers out there today, they may be thinking, I don't really know what I can do. The big thing to do is to get off the couch, get out of the pews. Uh, lukewarm churches, uh, you have got to stop this. We have got to fight to take this country mm -hmm. back because we are in a battle. So my mission is to empower through education. What is happening to this country? You've been doing this for, for years. Educate, educate, educate. Resonate with people and motivate them so that they know what is happening. You, if you are awake, then you are motivated to do something mm -hmm. about it and, and get into, into the game. So that is a key part. And then as I was uh, developing this ministry with the Lord's guidance, which we just launched July the 4th, patriotic holiday at mm -hmm. our church, and he kind of repositioned me. He said, not only do I want you to do that, Renee, uh, he said, I want you to really focus in on how patriotism and Christianity has been given a black eye, has been given a bad oh, yes. name. And I want you to bring back patriotism. You know, remember those days. Do we remember those, those days when, uh, you know, the, the innocence, the, there were uh, patriotic parades, there was baseball, there was apple pie, there was, uh, you know, church was not an afterthought. You had the, the picture in the living room of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane because he was vital to the home and bringing everything back to the home. I want you to help inspire people to, to want to go back that direction to times where were traditional values. That is, that is what got this country to where it is and that's what's going to keep us here. Mm -hmm. I could tell my first contact with her how 
how committed and what a burden she has for this. And the ballot box, what a privilege. Think of all the nations mm -hmm. who don't have the privilege to vote. Yes. And uh, you're very right to bring integrity back to our elections. Mm -hmm. And I, I know we have the best governor. Uh, Florida is so blessed. He's no nonsense. He's kind. But uh, he's all American, he appreciates the country, and he's a Christian, for sure. I sure. wrote him, I have written him a personal letter to give to him tomorrow, and I'm going to ask him to please call our governor in Tennessee, Governor Bill Lee, and I'm shouting out because I'm bold and I'm not afraid to say it, you need to stop being a rhino. You need to <laughs> absolutely toe the line for the conservative movement and the traditional values and stop kowtowing down to this madness that's going on. Yeah, I don't, I really don't believe it's Republican Democrat anymore. I believe it's righteousness and unrighteousness. And, and what you do, I, I don't know, I think I'd almost forget that personality on the ballot. What's the platform? Exactly. The platform's yes. what we're voting for. Are you willing to stand when the heat is on you? And well, also, um, you stand for life or abortion. That's right. You stand for perversion or you stand for the way God created men and women in the Garden of Eden. That's right. Th those are some of those platforms. And um, I think that Christians need to, absolutely need to be reminded of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so y the reason for your ministry really is to kind of educate and empower people and build a fire under them? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you remember the old song? Um, gosh, we used to sing it in youth groups. It only takes a fire or a spark to get a fire going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would start singing it, but your viewers would turn it off. Oh, the name of the song is Pass It On. <laughs> Pass It On. Yeah. yeah, but each one of us carries that spark inside of us. Mm -hmm. And if, if we can see someone else, you know, I'm just, uh, I, I was just, uh, you know, I'm, there's nothing special about me uh, in terms of, uh, you know, having Rockefeller type money or anything like that. Anybody and everybody can do something for this cause to restore and, and do you want America back? How bad do you want America back? You even have a conservative puppy, right? <laughs> She's Let, a, let's take a picture. Do you call him? I, What's his name? Patriot Pet Peeve. <laughs> because everybody needs a pet peeve. There you go. And and she Who made him the color of the flag. <laughs> well, we did that before she makes appearances. She becomes a star-spangled pup. Uh -huh. And so she's an anti-communist canine. She's a rescue dog. Anti-communist. Anti a rescue dog. She's a rescue dog, and she's all she's set. She's so cute. To go to work and rescue America. Mm -hmm. And and you know what? We had to get her off that couch. Mm -hmm. You know, she cannot be a socialist anymore. Get off the couch. Get into the game. And let's fight. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she's she's in it. She's in the. You fight. know, the the scripture is so plain, and and all through the Bible, there 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 are boundaries. There's nations. There's specifics. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Mm -hmm. But when you go to vote, the Bible says, when the godly, the righteous, are in authority, the people rejoice. Yes. And if you would. Take a few of those scriptures to heart. We're we're not talking politics here. We're we're talking about righteousness and unrighteousness. Yes, and uh, that the Christians understand they have the ability, they have the power, they have the numbers to turn things around. They do. And if anyone needs ideas, go to my web website at starspangledchick.com. I list some things there of how to get involved and what to do. There's also a way to get a free list of conservative friendly businesses. So that's one of the things we want to do. We want to seek out and support those businesses that are conservative you friendly. Have those. And what you can do is go on my website and my uh, email address is on there, chiefchick at starspanglechick.com and just email me and I will be happy to get that list out to you. These are the businesses we need to be supporting to because they are helping us and they're not caving to this count, cancel culture that we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. Same. It's such a tragedy, and I can't, I can't understand why law enforcement allows our statues to be taken down. Mm -hmm. none, of the, none of the representatives in those statues were perfect. Of course not. No. Well, we know that, and you know what? You're not perfect either, and neither am I. Right. But they had, a, they had a real important place in building America to what it is today. 
you, you, we talk about sanity being restored, but I would just like to see common sense come back. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. Absolutely. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, you're exactly right with, with what you're saying and, and that uh, I think most people today um, have are almost afraid to get into the battle because of the bullying that's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, conservatives are being censored. We're being shut down. We're being harassed. Um, and Fight uh, back. Yeah. But you know, God did not say the battle was going to be easy. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, when he first called me into this, I was like, ah, I don't think I really want to do that right now because it's a bad scene for conservatives. And and they'll bully you. They'll, they, you know, you stand for righteousness, you're going to be bullied on Facebook and things like that. Absolutely. And to speak the full truth, we see a lot of churches today who are only speaking part of the truth. Mm -hmm. They're tickling ears. But if you are going to, to be out there in the battle for the Lord, you're going to have to speak the full truth, whatever it costs you. Mm -hmm. And, and whatever you need to do. And the Lord doesn't wait till the storm to pass to call us into the fight. Uh, we're, for, we're first responders for Him. He calls us into the fight when mm -hmm. the fire is, is hot and when things are, are going. So, um, And I, I so commend these moms, these good American moms. They find out, and they found some of it out through, through COVID, you know, through this virtual schools and things. Mm -hmm. What they're teaching our kids is a bunch of garbage, mm -hmm. and uh, there's nothing like a mama bear. And and they're out there, and I pray your tribe will increase, and that school board members will be voted off who are bringing these things to our children. These are our children. Mm -hmm. Oh, for heaven's sake! Mm -hmm. You know, you you wouldn't put them in a bloody battle, not at all. But you, when you put them in a, supposedly a safe place like a public school and they mess with their minds and yes and so um, they're coming for our kids mm -hmm. they're coming for our kids and if you look at it I think a lot of Christians too uh, we've sort of you know the turn the other cheek mentality oh they couldn't possibly yeah. be that diabolical there is an actual agenda yeah. to capture the hearts and minds of our kids get them young Get them young and uh, confuse them. The mm -hmm. enemy is all about the author being the author of confusion, and um, he's also about pushing God to the sidelines. Absolutely, and we are we are just out of time. But I I pray that somehow you've been uh, stirred up. This is a battle that we could win, but we got to have a lot of soldiers in it and realize realize the cost if we lose. It's unbelievable. Well, thank you for being with us, and please remember. Always, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. So you homekeepers, get out there and fight, okay? God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.